Good morning, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the wonderful name, the name above all names, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful feeling to be with you to be with you. It is awesome to know that we can know that today we are here to love and praise. He has made us a way to give us. He was for us good. He has for us. He has for us. He has for us. He has for us. He was a wonderful father, a wonderful God for us in this world. And that's why we can't be other than to love and praise Him. Come and sleep for your ears. Our Father in our Lord Jesus Christ, His wonderful name, come and we open our ears. We will love and praise Him here today. We will bring Him glory. We will bring His name up. Because He is more than worth for us to love and praise Him here today. He is for you. He is above all and above all. And that's why we can't be other than to sing. Bo alles is die God en ons sê dankie dat die vir ons lief is. Eer die wonderlijke naam. Kom ons sing, great and mighty is our Lord.
Heere, ons prijs die, aan u kom al die lof en eer, in Jesus naam, Amen. Good morning, beautiful, blessed people of Coastland Revival Center. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you believe we are a center for revival? I believe it. Hallelujah. Well, you know, we are getting ready to go into a new phase with our church and we are trusting God. Listen, the, the, the details are going to follow soon. So please just watch your phones. And uh, um, yes, we are excited. We are excited. Listen, I've got a desire. I want to have church. And uh, um, I'm trusting God to, 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 to open up the doors. But let's just open up with prayer this morning. We heard a very interesting thing. Um, it kind of blessed me when I heard it. Chris Valentin say, shared something. He says, we often say, when all else fails, pray. And then he says that if we prayed about it, then all else would not have failed. So it's actually kind of a dumb saying to say, if all else fails, fails pray. We should have prayed first and all else would not have failed. Prayer has got to be our first option. It cannot be our last resort. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Father, this morning we honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the one true God, the one who never fails us, the one who's never left us behind, the one who's never left us alone. You are always there for your word said you will never leave nor forsake us. And, and this morning, once again, as we just experience your presence drawing near unto us, as we have drawn near unto you, Lord, we are once again reminded of your closeness. You are closer than any brother or sister, any mother or father. You are our first love. The one who we run to, the one who helps and protects and provides for us. You are the one we want to praise. We want to praise you in the morning. We want to praise you in the night. We want to praise you all day long. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord God Almighty. And we give you praise and glory and honor. For there is no one else like you. No one deserves it more than you. Jesus, receive. Your glory this morning. For all that we do and all that we are is for your glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. This morning, I want to talk to you about something that God has laid upon my heart. Now, I've not forget about dunamis. I'm going to do a separate series on dunamis. We're going to engage in it. In the week time, I will give through those times and dates because it's something it's going to be a little bit more intense. And it's going to be shared on the YouTube and Facebook channels and, 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 uh, and platforms. So please have not forgotten about it. I just felt God said it's a little bit more intense. So I'm going to rather focus on that separately and just preach the word of God this morning as he's laid it upon my heart. Amen. Right. So if you've got your Bible, open it up to the book of Judges. You're going to say, but pastor, we dealt from it last week. I said, I know I didn't. I didn't pick the word. God gave it. All right. And this morning, I'm going to talk to you about jail breaking. Come on. Can you say that with me? Jail breaking. If you're in a jail you're going to break out of it this morning. I'm not talking about physical jail. If you are locked up for a crime, do your time. Some men feel like that or some women feel like that. All right. I'm talking about if the state has convicted you. All right. If you've done the crime, do the time. Amen. Can you say amen to something like that? I'm not even sure. Whatever. You get it. Jail 
breaking, jail breaking. Amen. We're going to break out of some jails this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read, let's read what the word of God has to say to us. It says in verse 2, Richter 16, Judges 16, verse 2, verse 2. When the Gazites, I'm so grateful these people are not around anymore, were told, Samson has come here. They surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it is daytime, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Right. I can just picture this. I like to picture the Bible as I read the Bible. He's coming up to that gate. Time to go home now. Open up that gate. Uh, it's time to go home now. Open up that gate. Can someone please get someone that can open up the gate for me? And the next moment he just walks and he pulls that gate. And I mean, listen people, when, we, when, 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 when you get a picture of that gate, please do not picture your grandmother's gate when you went and visited her. These are the gates that was reinforced to keep the enemy out. These gates, if you wanted to breach those gates, you had to get one of those barricades. Am I right? That they ramped the gate and they would consistently ram and bump against that gate until the gates finally broke open and they could get in. So this wasn't just a gate. This was a gate. All right. So he goes and he pulls out the gate, bar and all, and the posts. Wow. And he carries them up a hill and leaves it there for them so that they can go get their leg gate later. All right. Now, something that, um, as I read the story, you see Samson going into this town, and he wants, and he went there to have a good time. You can read verse 1. All right. So he's going to have a party. He's here for a party. He wants to have a good time. He's going in and suddenly, while he's not noticing it or paying attention to it, they are locking him in. All right. And we are in a time, we are gradually coming out of it by now, yes. But we are in a time of lockdown. And I just want to say to you today, because this is something that the Lord has laid upon my heart. Be careful that the lockdown doesn't lock you in. In other words, be careful of not being locked in. You know, at the beginning of this whole thing, I never really enjoyed it. I never really looked forward to it. But it's still in the beginning, especially those first three weeks. It was like a Nikki was something new. It was so, all the things that we did was so very exciting because it's a new way of engaging with people. It's a new way of bringing the word for us. It's a new way of engaging with you. It's a new way. It's things are different, you know. It's not much you can do. It's something completely new, something we've never, ever done. So it was like this, this Nikki. But you see, I've realized that the longer this goes on, the more a custom we are becoming of being locked down and locked in and that is a problem see at the beginning of this whole pandemic messages were flying around people were talking and the longer this has gone on it's as if people have gradually 
grown quieter. This is not stiller and stiller more. And I've realized after doing some personal reflection that it's almost as if the lockdown is slowly but surely also locking me in. If I look at the engagements that we had on these platforms, in the beginning, people were faithfully, duly, on time, every time, 9 o'clock, you could see them all starting to, 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 to come on. Now, as time has gone on, you know, people still watch, but they do it at their own leisure, at their own time, because, you know, it's, I think you catch my drift. And it's slowly but surely, I've, I've, I've started to, to realize that the things that I don't pay attention to, if I'm not going to pay attention to not being locked in, it's going to subtly happen and I'm going to at a point and a stage realize that I'm being completely locked in. I do not feel I can go anywhere, go any place, do anything. I've been busy and distracted like Samson was and the enemy is gone and he's locked the gate. And I'm starting to think to myself that if we return to a certain point of normalcy, how much normality will we really engage in? And I believe that this is something we've got to guard against is to be jailed in. But praise God, if you today are feeling a little bit locked in, you're feeling a little bit jailed in, then God is going to empower you today. To be jailbreaked. I believe there's a jailbreak coming. And if you are not feeling locked in. I believe you're going to today get some tools to remain in that state. Come on, I think you need to tell the devil. That he better open up the gates right now. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling down the gates, those barricades, those limitations. There are some gates going to be knocked down. Amen. Come on, you tell the devil, you better open the gate or I'm taking that gate and putting it somewhere else for you. All right, come on, tell the devil, say you open up the gate. Or I'm putting your gate somewhere else for you. And if you are not locked in, then you tell the devil, I'm getting some keys. <laughs> for any of your gates. Any of your gates. I'm getting keys. It doesn't matter what gate you want to close me in on. I'm getting some keys today. And the first one of those keys. I want to say to you. One of the first ways to get a jailbreak, one of the first ways to, go, ways to go jailbreaking is to speak into it. Why am I saying to speak into it? Because I don't know if you've realized, but all of us need to cover our mouths. It's as if the enemy's got a deliberate plan of covering our mouths. And subtly, it has a very subtle effect on us. But let me tell you today, and this is something that is consistently being placed upon my heart. I know that it's not just words, not just declaration. There needs to be a sense of action as well. Because the Bible says faith without deeds is nothing. And your deeds reflect your faith. But God has said something to me and I pray that as a member of Coastland Revival Center, you've taken that to heart. And that is to not stop prophesying and declaring God's word over your life, over your business, 
over your children, your grandchildren, over yourself, to keep on declaring God's word. We are receiving news report upon news report, doubt upon doubt, uncertainties. We are being bombarded by them. That voice is consistently speaking over us. And unless we want to change the report, we've got to speak and prophesy God's word to change it. Unless we don't want to change it. But if we want to change, if you want to jailbreak, you've got to start saying, You've got to start speaking. You've got to start prophesying. Because you've got to remember, if the enemy covers my mouth, if the enemy can stop me from speaking, if the enemy can stop you from speaking, prophesying, and declaring, listen to me now, he is cutting of a harvest in your life. He is cutting off life in your life. Pastor, how can you say something like that? The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 20, that by the fruit of a man's mouth, he will be satisfied. So can you see that your satisfaction lies in your mouth? In other words, your harvest, because it's your harvest that will satisfy you. Your harvest is being cut off by your mouth. That in the sense of you speaking death. But also in the sense, if you don't speak life. If you do not speak life into your harvest. You're, the enemy is cutting the harvest off. He is, in actual fact, cutting some of that which belongs to you off because you are not calling it forth. Because it says in verse 21, life and death lies in the tongue. And that's not just speaking life all the time in the sense of not speaking death. That is consistently speaking life. In the midst of death. Sometimes we want to speak life. Just because we don't want to speak death. You get someone who say He's feeling some kind of sickness in his body. Now he doesn't want to speak. That sick life into that sickness. So he doesn't say that he is feeling sick. He maybe just says that. I'm not quite what I can be. I'm not feeling how I should feel. So he's trying to speak life. Or he will say, even though he doesn't feel that way, that I'm feeling good today. God is good. God has healed me, even though he doesn't necessarily feel that healing yet. He's speaking life. But what about speaking life in the midst of death? When the economy is looking down, you speak life and say, I will prosper. You see, if I don't say that, I cannot be satisfied by it. And if the enemy can close our mouths, he can cut our harvest. I don't know by how much. 50%, 20%, 60%, 27 I don't know. But if we don't speak consistent life, if we don't declare the word and prophesy consistently, we're giving him ways in. So to jailbreak out of a situation, start speaking life. Start declaring life. Let us start speaking death into this coronavirus. Let us start speaking death into the works of this coronavirus and let us start speaking life let us not allow him to cover our mouths with mask now i'm not saying that it's a bad thing to wear a mask don't get me wrong 
I'm talking about the enemy keeping your mouth shut. Keeping you and subtly, by example, using the mask to keep our mouths, cover our mouths, that it will cover our mouths not to speak life. You get me? Amen. Come on. And then, let your words reflect your prayers. And your prayers, your words. You know, I can't tell you how many times we've experienced something like this. And I'm sure you've also experienced it. You get some person that goes and he says, Lord, I pray. Yere ek bid. Ek I trust God that you are going to do a mighty work in my life. And then when you ask them, hey, how are things looking up for you? Oh, you know, with this economy, you know, it's only God. It's, you know, your prayers and your words don't align. So let your words reflect your prayers. Or are you ashamed of that which you talk to God about? You see, and let our pray, let, let our words reflect our prayers and let our prayers reflect our words. I think if we sometimes listen to what we are saying and take that into our prayer room. Can you think if you took the words that you were saying and you took that into prayer, into your prayer room, how much faith will God find in your words? When you take your words into your prayer room. Are you willing to say the words that we so easily say in front of people, in front of God, when you pray to Him for whatever? You see, our prayers should reflect our words and our words should reflect our prayers. Do not allow. Come on, tell somebody next to you. Say, my words, I'm going to change my words. My words are going to be prophetic words. My words are going to be the word of God. My words are going to reflect God's word. And my prayers and my words are going to come in line. Amen. Can you say that? Tell somebody next to you, say, I'm jailbreaking today and I'm doing it by my mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, tell them. Say, I'm jailbreaking today and I'm going to talk my way out of it. Amen. The second thing is that it needs to break the hold of fear. Now, imagine yourself just for one moment in Samson's position here. He wakes up in the middle of the night. He's laying low. And the whole, all, all which is a soldier is waiting for him. And they've organized that they will get him by closing the gate. Now, most of us. If we walk into a situation and everything is closed, we panic and fear starts to grip us. As long as there is a way out, then I got hope. Oftentimes heard people say, do not lock me in or do not press me in. I will go off my mind. Don't try and... And, and, and cover me. Some people are, have, have this fear that when, 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 when they cover tightly, that, you know, it, it, it just completely, they, they, they just completely go crazy. And you see now, Samson is walking out and he's just, it, it's not that he's just not, don't have a way out. There are some nasty, well-trained people waiting to chop him down. So there's a plan to get rid of him while, despite, above and beyond the fact that he is locked in. And you know what? Oftentimes the devil locks us in and then he overwhelms us with things. He overwhelms us with thoughts. He overwhelms us with circumstances. He overwhelms us with our own thoughts. With our own mind. He overwhelms us with, 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 with so many things. Because he's got us locked in. All alone. We become vulnerable. Once the taken. Soft targets. You know. He, he, he's got us. Because he's got us all alone. And the Bible says. In unity. God releases a blessing. Where there's. 
unity, God releases an anointing. So oftentimes when the devil's got us locked in, he starts to overwhelm us by fear. And fear is a controlling mechanism. You see, when we are worldly inclined, we are susceptible to fear. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying that if we are worldly inclined, if we believe the newspaper, we are worldly inclined. And if you read the newspaper, let me tell you, you will be in your right mind to be afraid if you read the newspaper. You will be in your right mind to live in a state of fear if you listen to the news and to the opinions of people out there. You won't be crazy to be like that. But you see, in the same sense, you are and we are then worldly inclined. We are, we've got our minds set on the world and fear will grip us. But the Bible doesn't call fear an emotion. Did you know that? You know, oftentimes people refer to fear as an emotion. The Bible doesn't say that fear is an emotion. The Bible says that fear is a spirit. If you don't believe me, then you just take your Bible that you've got open at Judges 16 and you page to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, where the Bible says we have not received a spirit of fear. So you see, the Bible refers to fear as a spirit and every spirit that is not of God but of the devil works to kill, steal, and destroy. So fear is a controlling mechanism and it will control you through lies. It will control you through killing and stealing and destroying your life. Why do we say it controls when it kills? Because if I threaten to kill, you will instantly yield. If I threaten to destroy, you will instantly yield. So you see, and if I and if I steal, then I start to lead you into positions that I want you in. So fear is a controlling mechanism. But when we are spiritful, hallelujah, when we are spiritful, then we are bold and courageous. Then, like Samson, we walk up to that gate and say, Devil, I'm about to jailbreak your jailbreak. I'm about to jailbreak this gate. You tried to jail me in. You tried to lock me in. I'm about to jailbreak. I'm even revealing my plan to you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm about to jailbreak this plan of yours. But we need to be spirit filled. In Acts chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says that when Peter who was a fisherman. Was in the midst of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When they took him to trial. The Bible says the Holy Spirit was in him. He was filled. That's what it says. He was filled. With the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 chapter 8. And he started speaking. You see when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. When we are spirit inclined. We are bold. And courageous. We are not. Fearful. And we will not be controlled. By fear. The third thing that I want to speak to you about. About jailbreaking. Is getting rid of. Do this. Touch your nose. Do this. Stinking thinking. Come on. We're jailbreaking some stinking thinking this morning. Stinking thinking. Yes, stinking thinking. Have you ever stepped into a mess? We call it landmines. Lunt manor. Dogs leave them. The bigger the dog... The bigger. Have you ever stepped in something like that? 
If you've stepped in something like that with all of your might, you try and avoid it with everything that you can. I mean, immediately your shoe loses value. You could have paid a thousand, two thousand rand for that shoes. You are considering throwing them away. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Stinking thinking. But have you noticed how much landmines we think about? I don't know about you, but have you ever recalled at the end of the day of all the things you were thinking about in that day? And how much of those things were those landmines? That which is under our feet becomes our main thinking and it becomes a habit to think of it. That which is under our feet becomes, rises to the top and it comes and it's in our minds all the time. Now our mind is, always is a battlefield. And there are great battles going on in our mind. And our mind is also oftentimes our greatest limitations. It's not my family. It's not my job or situation or the circumstances or the finances. It's sometimes my mind. Because I oftentimes hear people, I didn't think I could. It's not a matter of finance not being available. I didn't think I'd make it a success. It's not a matter of not being able. I didn't think I could do it. It's not a matter of the circumstances that I'm in or the parents or the children that I have. I didn't think I could make it. And my mind becomes my greatest limitation. Here's another limitation that is in our minds. Oh, I didn't think of it. The solution was there, but I didn't think of it. Why? Because my mind was under my shoe. The landmine was not under the shoe. It was in the mind. And I believe today that we are jailbreaking some stinking thinking. Now I want to ask you something. Where is the devil supposed to be? The Bible says that he is supposed to be. We sing that song. He is under my feet. Now if he is under my feet and the landmine is under my feet, then I want to ask you what is his mind mixed up with? His mind has to be mixed up with that landmine. So come on. You take your mind. You take your hand and you put it on your mind. And you say, I refuse to keep my mind where the devil keeps his. Woo! Say that again. I refuse to keep my mind where the devil keeps his. Just say that again. Say, I'm jailbreaking, stinking, thinking today. And I refuse to keep my mind where the devil keeps his. Come on. Man, man, just look at your feet a little bit and say, I refuse to keep my mind where the devil keeps his. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Colossians 3 verse 2 says, think on the things above. Think on the things above and not on the earth. And in Philippians 4 verse 8, and we shared this on Friday evening, where we said, on the things that are lovely, that are good, that are just, these are the things that we should think of. Things above. And it gives us direction on how to use and filter our minds. So come on, tell yourself right now, I am jailbreaking. Come on, say, I am jailbreaking, stinking, Thinking, and I refuse 
to put my mind where the devil puts his. Come on, just say that again. I refuse to put my mind where the devil puts his. Then the fourth thing, the last thing is to make a decision. You see, a decision is purposeful and intentional. The dictionary has it like this. To arrive at a solution that ends uncertainty or dispute. To come to a conclusion. Our decisions direct our actions. Our decisions direct our actions. Joshua 24 verse 15. Joshua stands up in the midst of all the people. And he says, listen, you can go after the gods of your fathers. You can go after the gods of these people that you are living amongst. You can do this. You can do that. And then he comes and he says, but I have made a decision. I have made my mind up. And that is that me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, when I have decided, I am directed. Opinions do not matter. So if I've decided, then the opinion of whomever doesn't matter. If I've decided to do this that the Lord has told me, if I've decided to prophesy and to declare the word of God over my business, over my life, over my children, over my house, over my parents, over my anything that I've, if I've decided to prophesy and declare over them, then the opinions do not matter. Someone comes along and says, do you really think words will work? Their opinion does not matter because I have decided. Do you really think that that is going to work? Do you, don't you think that that is a little bit ridiculous? Don't you think that that is a little bit too far-fetched? Their opinions do not matter. And you know what? Some people will come with their stinking thinking and they will try and affect your decision. That's where you've got to say, I'm not going to base my decision based on the way that the devil makes up his mind. Come on. Hallelujah. That is where I say that his stinking thinking ain't going to impact my decision. You see, decisions means that all other options have been settled. I cannot be distracted. Hey, have you thought about that? Yes, I have. And I have decided to do this. Have you thought in this and that and the other? Listen, when you've come to a point where you've decided, it means that all the options must have already been taken care of. Decisions leads to direction. It gives your actions direction. So therefore, you say, if you've come to a point where you've decided, the options are off the table. You cannot be distracted by another opinion or by another option. You are settled. And why is this so very, very important? Because we need to decide today to jailbreak. Listen, we are in lockdown, but we are not locked in. And you can decide to not be locked in. And I'm not saying that you should rebel against the things that the government is saying. And I'm talking about spiritually. When there's an opportunity for you to praise God, you praise God. You do not allow these restrictions, these things that they've said, the regulations. You do not allow them to lock you in. Come on, tell yourself today, make a decision today that I will not remain locked in. I am jailbreaking today. I am jailbreaking today. I am going to jailbreak. My words are going to help me today to jailbreak. I am jailbreaking with my words. I am prophesying God's goodness into my life, into my business. I'm declaring it. I am today saying that my words are directed to my decisions. In other words, the things that I've now decided, I've decided to jailbreak. 
So from today, my words are going to go into the direction of my decision. If I've decided to do it, then I'm going to start declaring it. I'm going to start talking about it. And that's all that's going to come out of my mouth. I'm jailbreaking, stinking thinking because I refuse to think and I refuse to keep my mind where the devil keeps his. I'm jailbreaking, stinking thinking. I have decided to live with the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. You know, the other word, the other translation for sound mind is safe thinking. Isn't that awesome? So, Listen, it says, I have decided I'm going to jailbreak. And let me tell you something. If you've made up your mind, you've made a decision today that I've decided to jailbreak. Then it means that the restrictions that the devil is trying to throw to you, that thing of, oh, you know, I've just got to, I don't know if this church is going to open one of these days. Am I just going to lie down a little bit longer? You know, I've got an accustomed to lying in on Sundays and that kind of thing. Listen, do not get locked in. Do not get locked in. Oh, but you know, now that the church ain't open, then I can't do that and I didn't do that. Do not get locked in. And when the church opens, come on, you're going to go and you're going to say, I refuse to be locked in. Yes, come on. I'm going to do some jail breaking today. Yes, you. I'm declaring over you. You are doing some jail breaking. You are jail breaking bad words. You are jail breaking words that bring forth destruction. And you are jail breaking the words of this world. You are entering into the words of God, prophesying God's word, declaring God's promises. You are jail breaking, stinking thinking, and you are jail breaking into heavenly thinking. You are moving into it. You are thinking the things that are above. You are jail breaking fear. Listen, if the enemies hold you back through fear, you are jail breaking fear today. You will not be held back by fear. And you will know if you are held back by fear. You will know whether it is fear that is restricting you or whether it is wisdom that is restricting you and i'm not saying that you should confuse the two but you are jail breaking fear today come on hallelujah you are doing things out of wisdom you are doing things through a sound mind safe thinking and you are you are taking in the spirit of power you are taking in the spirit of love and you've got boldness and courage on your side hallelujah but yes we refuse to be locked in. The enemy cannot lock us in. We are like Samson. We walk up to that door and we say, you better open up this door. What do you mean the guy who's got the remote is to sleep on leave? Not my problem. Get a different remote. Because by the time that I get to that gate, if that gate ain't open, I'm taking that gate with me. And I'll take you and your plans and everything that you had with me and I will ruin them. I will put them where they belong and that is under my feet where your stinking thinking is. And I'm going to walk with your gate up to that hill and I'm going to put it on that hill so that you can plan something and something for someone else. But it better not be someone who is associated or in Coastland Revival Center because they're just going to take your gate and take it back. So you got to know, you got to open the door. I am not remaining locked in. I am going to jailbreak. Listen, hallelujah. We are jailbreaking the plans of the enemy. We are jailbreaking the traps of the enemy. We are jailbreaking today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you give us the power to jailbreak the plans. Because, Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper and no tongue raised against us shall be able to stand. Lord, we jailbreak the plans of the Destruction, the plans of killing, the plans of stealing that he has for us today. And we say by the grace of God, we will go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. So today, devil, we're telling you 
Listen, we refuse to keep our minds where you keep yours. We refuse to speak your words. We will speak the word of God. We will declare God's promises. We will prophesy and say we will go up and not down. We are the head and not the tail. Goodness and mercies will follow me all the day of my life. Catch up and surpass me. I walk in the goodness of God. I am favored by God. I am blessed by the Lord. I am once and all. It is settled. The blessed of the Lord. God is for me. He is not against me. The Lord God rejoices in my prosperity. These are the words that I declare. And today I'm telling you, you have long, long enough held us in fear. We will not live in fear. We will live with safe thinking, a sound mind. We will live in power and we will live in love. What we do, we do because we know God is for us. What we do, we do because we love we what we do we what what, what would we do we do it with safe thinking but godly safe thinking and i thank you lord that you take us and we have now made a decision the line has been drawn me and my house we will serve the lord we will run to God. We will say what God says. We will do what God said. We will go where God has told us to go. And we will get there. We will get there in the mighty name of Jesus. So we declare your goodness, your glory and your favor in Jesus precious mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Jailbreaker. Hallelujah. Yes, we love you and we see you seen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord have his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May the Lord have his countenance to rise of you and give you peace. You are covered by the blood of the Lamb. You are led by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Bye-bye.